This is Mr. Beck. This is part two in my series on working with a bitmap inside of Android. Um, it's for my eighth grade Android programming class. Here's my activity main, and it's inside of the layout folder. I'm going to ask uh, my class to do a couple of things here to get this set up. The goal of this particular um, lesson is to make it so that the left button makes the uh, rocket rotate left when you click it when you release it stops and the right button when you click it the rocket will rotate right and when you release the button it will stop we're gonna do a little setup you'll notice I also have at the top of this program a text view and we're gonna use that to keep score uh, for right now we're just gonna use it to verify that our buttons are working early on you'll notice that when I push the right button and hold it down the text view changes to a one when I release it becomes a zero. The same thing with left and the same thing with fire. Um, so we're going to use this text view early on just to verify that we are um, catching our action down and action up events correctly by just changing that value so we can actually see what's happening. All right. So uh, inside of our activity main.xml, the first thing I'm going to ask my class to do is I'm going to ask my class to add a text view. And uh, I want you to go ahead and make the text view top center. You can use the graphical manager for this. That's fine. Um, because the frame layout stacks from bottom to top, you want to have the panel class, the panel view here, at the bottom. And then have everything else sort of stacked on top of that. So we've got a text view, it's called text view one with a gravity of top center. And the initial text is text view. It'll just say text view when you run the application initially. That's fine for now. Inside of our main activity class, just as a reminder, we can initialize this text view by declaring a text view variable, right? And setting it using our find view by ID method to the text view one ID. We've done this in class several times. So we've got a text view now that has been initialized and is ready to go. Take a second, if you're in my class, and make that text view work at the top of the game. Okay, once you have your text view, let's take a look at the buttons. Inside of the activity main, I have three buttons set up, button one, which has a which is our right button right now. We have button two, which is our left button, and we have button three, which is our fire button. So button one, button two, and button three. And inside of, you know, just to kind of keep track of these things, inside of my main activity, I have comments that just indicate this is our right button. And we have all those set up. So in my class, we've done a lot of work setting up buttons, and I'm going to ask you to set up all three buttons the same way we set up that first button so that we can detect when there's an action down when the button is being held down, and when there's an action up when the, the button has moved up. Okay, um, The same basic logic that we have for button one, I'm going to ask you to set up for button two. All right. And you'll see I have some extra things in there we'll talk about. And button three. All right, so you should have three buttons initialized and listening for uh, presses. Now, what we're going to do is just to debug the application at first and make sure that it's working well, is we're going to use this text view that eventually we'll keep score with just to toggle uh, a number so that we know when the button is being held down and when it's being uh, released. You know, we want to actually physically see that it, we're registering this action. So inside of for every action down for each button here, I've simply inserted a tv.set text 1. So when the button is being held down, the text view has been set so that there's a 1 showing up. And when it is released with action up, we have a 0 that is being printed to the text view. And that's the second thing I'd like my class to do is set up your buttons so that we have these tv.set texts available and they demonstrate that the buttons are working. Now this is a, a grade in my class so when you have this working you need to let me know and here's what it needs to do basically simple enough you push the button and you can see the text view up here at the top you push it it becomes a one you release it becomes a zero 
each button. You push it, it becomes a 1. You release it, it becomes a 0. You push the button, it becomes a 1. You release it, it becomes a 0. All three of these buttons need to manipulate the text view just like that. When you have it, raise your hand. I'll come over and I'll, I'll check it out. And we'll be ready to move on to the next part where we actually add the rotation. Okay, so once you have your button set up and you're toggling the text view, at the same time, you'll notice for each button, we are toggling a value inside of our getter setter class, a static integer. And we're setting that to 1 and 0 as well. For button 1, and you'll notice button 2 and button 3. So whenever we press those buttons inside of our getter setter class, we are toggling a 0 or a 1 here for 1, 2, and 3. We're going to need that in our panel class. And let's take a look at that and let's add rotation now. Inside of onDraw, every time there's a screen refresh, okay, I'm doing a couple of things. And remember, please try to read over my comments. They're, they're important to the understanding here, I, I hope. Um, we are getting the width and the height of the canvas inside of onDraw. So we know how wide and how tall it is because we want to draw our icon to the center and different devices have different sizes. So we're going to use that information, the width and the height of our canvas, the screen size, so that we can position this thing at the beginning of the game in the center. We're then drawing this icon, this bitmap, all right, um, at a position that is defined within the matrix class. And if you take a look at the top of the panel class, you'll see where I define the matrix. Well, we're going to manipulate the information inside of position using this method update. And that's called every screen refresh. So let's look at it. Inside of our update function, we're declaring a local variable an instance of the class matrix called M. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up with the rotation, the size, the position of our bitmap for every screen refresh. Okay? It will have all the information that we need in order to place and rotate this bitmap. And what we're doing is we are setting the rotation value here using post rotate, the post rotate method. And we're, we have a rotation value, okay? And that's pretty much just uh, a number, you know, 0 through 360 would be what it is, you know, um, <clears throat> essentially. And the post-rotate method has two other values. You know, it needs to know the point at which we're going to rotate this bitmap around. And so what we need to do is we want to rotate the bitmap around the center point right now. So we get the width of the bitmap and the height of the bitmap and we divide it by 2. If the bitmap is 10 wide and we divide it by 2, well that's 5 and that's the center. So we're defining our center point and we're giving it a rotation value. All right, and that's being loaded into our matrix M. Now down here, we're going to tell it, well, okay, where do we want to draw the bitmap? Position X, position Y. And X and Y up inside of onDraw, we grab the screen height and the screen width, and we're dividing that by 2. And that alone is the center of the screen. But then we also need to know how wide and how tall our bitmap is as well and subtract that value. In any event, X and Y now, no matter how big or how tall the screen you know, is for any given user, this will, this x and y will turn out to be the center because we're dividing by 2 and doing the, the appropriate math there. And the post translate, um, to translate something is to move it. We're going to load our matrix M with the values x and y. So we have a rotation value and we have a position value that we can use later on. Now what we do is we take this local M, okay, and we have our global position matrix, all right? And we're just going to basically make a copy of um, our local M matrix and load it into our position matrix. So position.setm, position now takes on all the 
attributes of m. And when we draw up at the very top, we are using position. So every screen refresh, the values inside of position will be changing because we're calling update um, every screen refresh as well. Okay, so this is where we now modify our rotation value that's being pushed into our matrix. And we have two buttons here that matter, button one and button two. Every time we hold down button one, we are changing the getter setter button one pressed integer to the number one. So we're going to check for that. And we're going to say, okay, if it equals one at any given time, add to the rotation value two, right? And if button two pressed at any given time equals one, in other words, the user is holding that down, well then subtract two from the rotation value. So every screen refresh, it's going to add or subtract two. And you're going to get a rotation if they're holding down, for example, button one pressed, and rotation starts at zero. For every screen refresh, we're going to increase it, so it'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And after a certain number of seconds, you're going to have a fairly high rotation value. And that goes inside of our update method. All right, so the upshot of that is when we press these buttons, we are decreasing the rotation here. And we release the button, and now that value equals 0, so we're not subtracting anymore. And when we press the button, we're toggling 1 inside of our getter setter class. And therefore, the program goes through and it adds to the rotation value. When you have your ship rotating left and right, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll grade it. And you're ready to move on to video three where we're going to set up a thruster when we push this button or hold it down. The ship will then move in the direction that is pointed. Thanks for watching and uh, look for video three if you've uh, caught up and gotten this far.